Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. I'm a uh, CTA for um, edX MITx 18.6051x Introduction to Statistics, and I'd like to do a um, a deep dive on the chi-squared students t distribution. and um, also show that for a IID Gaussian variables, the uh, sample mean and the uh, sample variance are independent. And um, there was a uh, recitation which covered a lot of what I'm going to cover, but it was heavy on the linear algebra, formalism, and uh, n-dimensional notation. So I'm going to try and simplify it a little bit. And um, this is the first video of several and um, this is actually adapted from a, uh, a well-known mathematical physics textbook by, mathema by uh, Matthews and Walker called uh, Mathematical methods of physics and uh, chapter 14 is on uh, probability and statistics it's a pretty short uh, it's a pretty short um, chapter but it covers a lot and this is a uh, Mostly problem 14, 7. So, um, my goal, I'll start in this video by deriving the, uh, the PDF for chi-squared with d degrees of freedom. And then in subsequent videos, I'll deal with the... Um, sample mean and sample variance and derive the uh, student's t distribution. So, recall that um, chi-squared is just defined as the distribution of the sum of d standard normal random variables the I is IID. That's the crucial thing. They're all standard normal, but they have no covariances. And um, so to get a handle on this, I'll, um, I'll just show that if we're in like two dimensions, because I can draw easily in two dimensions, circle, this is Z1, Z2, say this is a point P with coordinates P1 and P2, and this distance here is nothing other than chi, and here we're in two dimensions, so this would be chi2. And so the main thing is that we have circular or in higher dimensions, but we would say spherical invariance. It just depends on the distance from the origin. And the, uh, the probability density of a given point P is simply equal to the probability of um, Z1 equal P1 and Z2 equal P2 with obvious extension to higher 
dimensions. And since these are IID, this factorizes f of z1 p1 times f of z2 p2. And since f is just a standard normal distribution, this is just going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi squared e to the minus 1 half p1 squared plus p2 squared. So if we want to know the probability of chi squared, let's say we were to draw another um, a little shell here. We want to know the probability of being in this being it because everything in here has the same distance from the origin so it has the same value of chi squared so the um, this density function is just going to be equal to well mathematically we know it's f of chi squared d chi squared is 2 chi d chi but this is equal to the integral I'm going to call it a spherical shell. In two dimensions, it's just a circular ribbon. Of the probability density, and then we would have like dp1, dp2, up to dpn. And this is, and because f of p is just I'm going to write this in d dimension in a second. It's chi in two dimensions squared. Because every one of these things is the same value, this is just equal to e to the minus chi squared over 2 times the volume of the spherical shell. Now, in two dimensions, this would just be equal to just 2 pi, let's say r, let's use r as the distance, as the radius, you know, 2 pi r dr for d equal 2. Three dimensions, 4 pi r squared dr, d equal 3. And um, if memory serves me correctly, 2 pi r squared r cubed dr for d equal 4, and so on. Now, these particular constants, we don't need. Physicists need them, but we don't need them because we're statisticians. Oops, I'm sorry. And uh, we'll normalize the probability distribution anyway. The important thing is, is that we're going to have r to the d minus 1 for D dimensions for D degrees of freedom. So moving on, this is just equal to we have the uh, f of chi squared 2 chi d chi is equal to e to the minus chi squared over 2 times chi to the d minus 1 d chi times some constant which we're not, we'll evaluate by normalizing the probability distribution. I'm going to write it as a 2c right now and you'll see why in a second. So this is equal to e to the minus chi squared over 2 chi to the d minus 2 2 chi d chi, that's why I put the 2 there, times c. So that implies f of chi squared is equal to a constant times e to the minus chi squared over 2 chi squared to the d over 2 minus 1. Okay, so to evaluate this we'll just integrate over all space 1 
is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, f of chi squared d chi squared, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the constant e to the minus chi squared over 2, chi squared to the d over 2 minus 1, d chi. Um, d chi squared. Okay, and now I'm just going to substitute w equal the obvious substitution chi squared over 2. So now this is equal to the constant times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus w 2w raised to the power d over 2 minus 1 times d 2w. Okay, this is this is equal to constant. Let's get the powers of 2. We have 2 to the d over 2 minus 1 and then another 2, so it's just 2 to the d over 2. The integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus w, w to the d over 2 minus 1, dw. Okay, this is a famous integral. This is the gamma function. And so the value of this is just gamma of d over 2. Um, the gamma function is extremely important in uh, pure and applied mathematics and physics and statistics and many other areas of applied science. And uh, the main properties are gamma of w plus 1 equal w gamma of w, which implies if n is an integer, gamma of n plus 1 equal n factorial. But the gamma function is actually defined in the whole complex plane, except that poles at the negative integers and um, zero as well. Anyway, uh, that's, a, that's a study for complex analysis courses. We'll just uh, write it in terms of the gamma function. So using this, we get C equals 1 over 2 to the D over 2, gamma of D over 2. And our final uh, answer, the PDF for chi squared is equal to e to the minus chi squared over 2, chi squared to the d over 2 minus 1 divided by 2 to the d over 2 gamma of d over 2. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes and you compare compare this with what was given in the lectures. So um, I'll stop here on this video and in the uh, next video we'll um, proceed on to analyze the uh, sample mean and the uh, sample variance and show that they're independent. Thank you very much.